Hey guys, Charles Float here, and in today's video I've got another presentation for you guys. I've been doing quite a few of these recently and putting them on YouTube just because I quite enjoy making them and they seem to be quite popular. Um, in this video I'm going to be covering on-page SEO and more specifically formatted data and exactly how I go about using it to rank in Google in 2016 um, and especially why on-page SEO isn't dead as a lot of people have recently claimed. <laughs> There aren't many things in the SEO community that haven't been covered in a lot of detail, but formatted content is specifically one of them, and it's something that a lot of people have been kind of looking over the last few months, um, in especially in an era where Google is focusing a lot more on on-page when it things like when things like Panda roll up, and the recent algorithm update that wasn't necessarily confirmed by Google, but did showcase a lot more knowledge graph based uh, SERPs coming back to people, which means that formatted content, because it does work side in side with the knowledge graph, um, is a perfect thing to get your Google rankings a lot higher. A lot of you will have recently seen the case study by Ahrefs where they claimed on-page SEO is dead. Um, as a direct result of that case study, a lot of people made replies to it, a lot of people made follow-up blog posts, and a lot of people kind of agreed with them as to that sentiment. Now, I think that it was a quite dangerous post because essentially what they were saying is that the only way on-page SEO is affected is essentially by keyword stuffing. So they they were taking on-page and essentially, well, they were using a clickbait title in the first place, but they were essentially saying that on-page SEO is only directly affected by the amount of keyword usage or the amount of keywords placed on a page they weren't looking at other things such as formatted content such as schema such as the length of the posts such as the not even just the so for example they weren't even using synonyms of the keywords which is something that google obviously do if you go into google now and type in automotive guess what comes up a ton of car related terms they aren't going to be automotive terms that exactly shows that google shows uh, synonyms are exactly the same or nearly the same power as the keyword itself in terms of using it on your website. Now I do not believe that on-page SEO is dead whatsoever and I'm about to show you exactly why in this video because I've been using it to rank for some seriously big terms over the last few months and the last few weeks um, and a lot, a lot of other people have as well in terms of people like Digital Marketer doing a lot of stuff and other people such as Ryan Stewart with his Laces Outside which is using a lot of topical relevance which I have got a blog post coming up in the near future on topical SEO. So what exactly is formatted content? Well, formatted content is using pieces of content on your website, such as a blog post um, with images, videos, texts, or pieces of code to create formats that Google can read and recognize and then understand that formatted piece of content and then in turn give you credit for it by using it in the knowledge graph or ranking you higher in Google because of that formatted piece of content. So now that you know what formatted content is, what are some examples of formatted content? Well, the first and most obvious one is schema markup. If you go to schema.org, you'll be able to get the full list of what is available within schema. But here's some examples that you can do. For example, on here, you'll see the review and author of the review, which is a schema markup um, used on the actual page itself, which Google can then read and put it into the SERPs. You'll also notice the date, which is a date meta, which is another part of formatted content. Um, you can put in all sorts of things, such as reviews, authors, company details, recipes, events, videos, products, images, and a ton of other things as well. So schema is a really powerful thing, and a lot of people have been using it recently because it does actually, number one, make your SERP bigger, so the actual uh, listing of your page in Google will be bigger due to the formatted piece of content uh, giving you a specific thing such as a rating or recipe card with inside Google search engine results which means you'll likely get a higher click-through rate as well as actually giving you giving Google a formatted way to read your blog post and then in turn Google generally gives it a little boost in rankings. If you want to actually use a plugin that allows you to do this, you can use a premium WordPress plugin such as Social SEO Pro if you're using uh, a website that is international or national. If you want to go more local, then I suggest using Project Supremacy by Herc, Mag Herc Magnus. It's a really good plugin for local uh, schema markup. Another one would be Table of Contents, a uh, free WordPress plugin that you can use for this is Table of Contents Plus, which you will see on the left side of my blog post here. That's just using that plugin. Um, it then, if you take a look in the right image, it 
basically puts a jump to filtering and purchasing links part in my uh, beginner's guide to buying SAPE links within the SERP. So it means that people who go and search filtering SAPE links can quickly jump to that specific section. This is actually really powerful for a lot of people who do it. And you'll notice this a lot more in terms of when Wikipedia is ranked because they use formatted uh, table of contents on their website, which is where a lot of SEOs got this from. Another one is formatted tables, which is using uh, this example here on the left is using table press, which is a free WordPress plugin. And then it translates onto the right term here, which is a massively searched term at the moment for an, a fairly new game called Overwatch. Um, it's it's a very powerful way to get yourself in the SERPs if, you're, if you want to actually showcase formatted data and Google will be able to read this very quickly. As you can see on the left, all it is is a table that looks very similar to Excel. And on the right, it is basically converted into the SERPs at the very number one spot to showcase all of the heroes within the Google SERPs. Obviously, it doesn't actually showcase all of them because there are that many rows. But you can, but then essentially, it is, allows you to click through to showcase that page of your website. Another example is image data. So using alt tags, the image title, changing the file name adding a caption and adding a source credit so that you're actually giving credit to whoever you got the image from google finds this really powerful and is and number one allows you to rank higher in google's image searches which actually does send traffic despite what a lot of people will say i've had a ton of traffic and a ton of links because of images that i have shared on my blog um, generally in forums and places like reddit you'll get a lot of links back because people just copy and paste the image url into a uh, shared file format so people can click on that image and it'll go through to your website which gives you an image link credit um, as well as the caption and the source credit etc giving it a bit more of a formatted data feel so Google can understand the image a lot better so now that you have a bit more of an idea of exactly what formatted content is and exactly what kind of formatted content you can use within your blog posts or on your website let's have a look at some case studies now the first case study is a blog post that I put out literally a few weeks ago um, it's a 1000 word blog post which is fairly small in terms of the other people who are trying to rank in this SERPs um, and it basically uses a number of formatted content pieces to try and rank for some fairly big keywords especially considering when you look at the other people in those SERPs you're going versus extremely high authority sites such as search engine journal Journal, Life at Cora, Inc, WP Beginner, Flink, Entrepreneur.com, and a ton of other massive sites. Um, I've actually been able to rank above a number of these websites within this SERPs here, and this has only came out two or three weeks ago. That is also a lot of people will say that because of that it's a freshness thing and that's why it's ranking so highly well i completely disagree with that because the freshness algorithm only generally works in the first week of a post going live or in the matter of days not three weeks down the line which is a perfect example of why this page is ranking very highly for these number of keywords and it's also ranking for a number of other keywords as well i expect in the next few weeks or the next few months once my blog gains a few more links and this page specifically maybe gains a few more links it will shoot up the rankings even more this is the page itself you'll notice there is a fair amount of content to start off with it uses a uh, the actual paypal and alternatives in the uh, title of the header and also it uses a more clickbaity title in terms of the Mets title than one that is specifically optimized for SEO purposes. Um, I've also put in a GIF right at the start which has an alt tag image title and a good file name for this which shows Google that it's a completely relevant image and it's a natural image rather than just putting PayPal account GIF I've given it a proper explanation to the actual GIF that Google is reading. Um, I also have my table of contents which is formatted here which is why if you actually Google PayPal versus Stripe fees or Payoneer versus PayPal fees, um, my page will actually have a jump to link for both of those there. I put in more images here with all completely organic looking uh, ank text, sorry, alt tags. Um, and then I've also put in some tables such as this one here and this one here, which is more formatted data for Google to read. And then possibly if the site gets big enough, ranking Google higher for uh, using actual these to actually calculate the Payoneer versus PayPal fees and show them in the SERPs. As you can see, the blog post is fairly small. It's nothing too massive, but it does showcase quite a few different ideas of formatted content, and that's exactly why it's ranking quite highly compared to those authority sites I showcased earlier. 
case study t- number two comes from one of my uh, probably most read blogs over the last year or two years, which is Digital Marketer. Um, Ryan Dice, the guy behind it, is a really, really powerful SEO, but he doesn't really know it because he's so good at everything else into marketing, such as retargeting, email list growth, blogging, video making, YouTube content, etc, etc. His blog is really powerful and I suggest you go and check out digitalmarketer.com. But they recently did a case study where they basically updated an old post with an extra 800 words, 10 images where they did in fact use all the image data that I said earlier, an infographic which they use even more uh, data by marking it up with schema and also using an alt tag and changing the file name to be optimized. And they also added plus five videos with video schema as well so that you can, uh, so that Google can possibly read those videos and use them if people search directly related to those videos and they can jump straight to those videos within the SERPs. Now if you actually look at all of this it's quite a lot of formatted data they've they immediately shot up and gained a ton of traffic related to actually doing this as you can see previously they were doing an all right amount of traffic to the blog post already but they immediately shot up with adding that more content and adding the more formatted content onto the page quite highly and made it a significant amount of things they also actually now rank number one for blog post ideas which is a massive keyword and that's why they're pulling in so much traffic mainly related to that keyword but they also rank for a number of other ones as well i hope you enjoyed this video presentation on formatted content and it gave you a bit more of an idea on how to go and use them in your own blog posts and your own website so that you can rank higher If you want to check out more from me, then join my email newsletter and get weekly updates about my latest content at charlesfloat.co.uk slash join, as well as follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and check out my blog at charlesfloat.co.uk. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.